My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. I've been my friends. I'm just trying to make you a little money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate and teach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Faith. Faith is hard to come by on Wall Street. We have a tendency to be jaded. We think we're always being tricked or lied to or flat out bamboozled. So on a day where the Dow slipped just two points, that's be gained 0.74%, and the Nasdaq pole vaulted 1.68%, I want to explain what happens when we stop thinking that everyone's trying to bag us and start trusting the people who deserve it, the ones, who de- the ones who've earned our trust. I think that's the key right now to making big money in the market, and many people are missing it. Why don't we start first with the Fed chief, Jay Powell. Now, here's a guy who doesn't get any credit for anything. He is the Rodney Dangerfield of central bankers. He's constantly being second-guessed, like he's clueless. That's just plain moronic. Powell's a pragmatic individual who doesn't surrender to politics or orthodoxy. He's the least promotional public figure in America today. He had to deal with once in a lifetime pandemic, which caused our elected leaders to spend money like crazy. He accepted it. He never bemoaned it. When he realized that the pandemic was under control, though, he raised rates 11 times in order to stamp out inflation. Each time, the economy snapped right back, so he had to keep tightening. Pell kept doing it until he realized there could be negative consequences if he didn't stop. That's right. We're now in a situation where inflation has cooled, cooled dramatically, even if it's still too high. And we also have an absurdly strong job market. It's just too strong to justify cutting rates. So it's time for Powell to stand pat and see what happens. There's nothing wrong with that. We have such low unemployment that he can afford to play for time. What can I say? He's created a very positive situation where business is good and many of the key inflation inputs will come down naturally on their own. More on that later. And if unemployment spikes, well, guess what? He's ready to bail us out with rate cuts. What more could you ask for? Unfortunately, Powell hasn't earned the trust that I think he deserves. Part of that's because he allows a degree of free speech from his fellow Fed officials. That's ill-advised, sir. They, his own colleagues, end up publicly but obliquely second-guessing his every move, even if that's not what they intend. But that's how it seems, because the media always magnifies their comments and gins up faux controversy to generate more exciting headlines. Fortunately, Powell's got a thick skin, but the skepticism makes for rough sledding. It doesn't help that he, the, the latest seemingly overheated CPI reading was, I felt, misleading, something his critics will seize on because they want power replaced by someone more ideological. It's an unholy situation. But you know what? If you had faith in Jay Powell and just ignored all the noise, well, you could have made a great deal of money, couldn't you, during this period? Isn't that what would have happened? There are so many strategists who can't hold a candle to this man, yet they pontificate as if he's a suboptimal Fed chief. If you listen to them, you wouldn't, you, you would have given up the whole market ages ago at much lower levels. Faith in Powell, he deserves it. Who else deserves our trust? Well, how about, how about Jensen Wong from NVIDIA? For the last five days, we've had to hear about how major players like Amazon, Alphabet, and Meta are developing their own chips to decrease reliance on NVIDIA, while Intel comes up with a competitive product. The news, let's put some quotes around that. The news has crushed NVIDIA stock, creating a presumption that these key clients are moving to quickly distance themselves from the company and break Jensen Wong's stranglehold on the super GPUs. (laughs) If only they could. Now, think back to when I last interviewed Jensen. I asked him directly about this competition multiple times because I knew it was coming. Each time, he made several things very clear. One, these companies will remain great clients. Two, right now, he simply can't give them everything they want purely because he can't produce enough chips to satisfy demand. And three, he's doing his best to help these clients develop these kinds of semiconductors. He can't understand what's the big deal. He comes in peace. Who's Jensen Wong? He's a visionary who's delivered on every promise and created $2.3 trillion colossus. Along the way, he's been doubted as if he were some sort of alchemist, a three-card mining dealer. Now, all I hear right now is that he's the man behind the AI bubble, as though this is the dot-com period all over again, 1999, maybe 2000. That kind of thinking has kept people from making fortunes in the stock of NVIDIA. What the heck did Jensen and his team need to do to earn your trust? 
How much value does he need to, to bring out, to create, before people realize that doubting NVIDIA has, in fact, been a very poor decision? He's not the con artist. You know who's the con artist? The bears are. Oh, and those claims that Intel's got the better chip? How dare they? Finally, there's Apple. Today we learned that Apple's going to refresh its whole Mac line of computers with its own AI chips. This story flies in the face of the prevailing narrative, which says Tim Cook and company have totally lost the way, stuck in a no-growth mode. Talk about a non-promotional guy. That's what Tim Cook is. I've come back and argued that you need to have faith because this team will come up with something great. That's what they do for a living. That will allow the growth to come back. I told you that because Apple, that's what they do. Of course, the myriad Apple bears will come out tomorrow and just say, oh, it's just the Mac, which is not enough to move the needle. My ride post. If they can put these AI chips in the Mac, then they can do it to the iPhone. More important, if something else needs to be done to ignite growth, well, guess what? I think it's time to have faith that Tim Cook will come up with it. So far, my analysis of all three people has been correct over the long haul. Otherwise, Apple and NVIDIA, and in the case of Jay Powell, the entire stock market would be much lower. Yep, I have faith that Jay Powell will fly the plane wherever it has to go. He's done it before. He'll do it again. With the only real turbulence coming from the condoning of absurd interest rate predictions from his colleagues. They should just say no comment when asked after giving how wrong they are. I have faith that Jensen Wong and company won't be crushed by their own clients. Instead, NVIDIA will help those clients deal with the shortage of Jensen's own supercomputer chips by coming up with less powerful chips that are still compatible with NVIDIA's product line. I have faith that Tim Cook will come up with a growth strategy for Apple, one based on technology that we love. We love. Because there are millions, literally millions of smart people who write apps for any kind of Apple hardware. Growth will return. If my positive track record on Jay Powell or my own it, don't trade it philosophy on Apple and NVIDIA have lost you fortunes, you can knock me all you want. If my faith has been punished, well, you're free to change the channel, turn me off, watch Netflix. I don't care. But right now, I think I'm money good with these calls. And the critics, I say to them, show me the money. Bottom line, don't scoff when I tell you to have faith in these people who've made us all fortunes. It's the skeptics who've been wrong. They're skeptics year after year after darn year. Even if you don't want to have faith in Jensen Wong or Tim Cook, I think they at least deserve more trust than the Bears, purely on the basis of the track records. Oh, and the Bears? They shit. You know what they do? They show you the honey. You know what I do? I show you the money. Last I look, the banks only take the ladder. Let's go to Joe in Illinois. Joe. Uh, Jim, Bababulia, R-S-R-G, Intuitive Surgical. They're smart fellas. I had them on a couple times. All they do is raise numbers. That's what they do. I thought they were in the raise numbers business, but it turns out that what they are in is in the hospital business, and they are crushing it. They have the best machines there are. Sorry, I like GE Healthcare, too, though. That's my chapel trust on that. Let's go to Michael in Indiana. Michael. Hey, Jim. A friendly uh, hello from the friendly Hoosier State, home of Eli Lilly. There you go. You know I like Lilly. I think it goes much higher. I'm looking at Eli Lilly being the next trillion-dollar stock. What's happening? Hey, I wanted to uh, let you know that I just joined your investing club two weeks ago. Oh, and, fantastic. And, you know, for what you're offering, for less than a dollar a day, it's a steal. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you. Thank you, Michael. That's, that's terrific. Thank you, Michael. What's going on? Hey, I want to talk to you about this well-known stock that was just recently around 195, but it's recently taken a beating. It's forward P.E., dividend yield, and net margin are all vastly superior to one of your favorites, Chipotle. What are your thoughts on McDonald's? Okay, McDonald's raised the price too much. And that's one of the things I saw in the CPI number yesterday that I didn't like. I think that McDonald's has contributed to that. They have to pull back prices. Nobody in this business ever wants to lower prices. This is time for a, what we call a Philip Morris moment for McDonald's. It happened to do something they did in the 80s where they lowered prices, wiped out all the competition. McDonald's should come out tomorrow with a $2 Happy Meal. It has everything in it. They crush the competition, and we'd all go to McDonald's. So they ought to take that position. I'm right. They have to do it. Bill Massachusetts, Bill. Oh, yeah, Jimbo. Yo, man, what's going on? How are you today? Today's just a dynamite Boston. day. Probably one of the better ones I've had in the last three. You know what, Jim? You've affected my tra trading so much. Now I enjoy when the market goes down because I know I'm going to get a bargain on these incredible Well, you're companies. a sadist. 
You're saying, like, well, but I share that sadism. I've, I've shared that view. Let's make money together. I used together. to panic. I used to panic every time that uh, I'd sell everything. Sell, sell, sell. Now I stay with everything. You do oh, not do together. that. Thank you. Okay. My, my question is on, on Meta. I call them the three horsemen. Meta, Google, and Amazon. They have more data on Americans than any companies in the world. And I think that in this AI training, I think these three companies could be big. I love all three of them, but I'd love to see what you think about Meta and where it's going at this point. Look, I'm a Zuckerberg believer. I, I, what, hey, when, when it wasn't cool, when it wasn't cool, I was a Zuckerberg believer. And it, but I have to tell you, I think Meta can go much higher because the multiple's not that high, and I think Instagram's still in early. And if uh, the government ever moved against TikTok, you'd be paying 700 for uh, Meta. But the government is as effective against TikTok as it is in every, every other aspect that I see. All right, look, you have to have some faith in the people who made us fortunes. They at least deserve more trust in the bears, right, based purely off their track records? Well, man, buddy, tonight, there's a lot of players in the artificial intelligence space because, uh, be- besides NVIDIA, you know. How about Marvell Tech? which hosted a special AI event right here in New York City today, and I'm getting the latest from CEO. Then the alcohol industry may be under pressure from a host of secular challenges, but you wouldn't know that by looking at that quarter from Constellation Brands, would you? I'm digging into that club name with the CEO. And you might know it as a pandemic darling, but DocuSign has a lot more going for it than that. I'm hearing more about the company's new era and outlook with the CEOs, and you don't want to miss it. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Cramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.